南京时间，观世界，见智慧。今年五十五岁的 Jeremy Sargent 来自英国，他还有一个很有时代特色的中文名赵立明。他是我国改革开放后迎来的第一批外国留学生之一。从一九八七年他来到中国留学，至今已有三十五年的光阴。他又将为我们讲述怎样的故事呢？ I've heard earlier that you have studied in China for a long time. So why did you choose to come to China for studying? Because in those days, as you know, China was pretty much closed. Yeah. Not many foreigners coming here. But I'd spent a little bit of time in Hong Kong, and I developed a real interest in Chinese language. Actually, my father encouraged me to to give up my dream to study engineering, and he said, "Why don't you study Mandarin instead?" And if you're still interested in engineering, you study that later. So actually, I have to thank my dad, who, who、uh, suggested that I、uh, switched my study plan to study Chinese and come to China at the time. So yeah, a decision that's totally changed my life. For me personally, when I first arrived and during these early years, membership of the chambers, not just the British Chamber actually, but Involvement with chambers and membership, so there was a lot of networking opportunities, and also knowledge sharing. So, what I mentioned earlier about some of the challenges with you know understanding the laws and regulations, the tax system, speakers would come in and share what we call real nuts and bolts type sharing、yeah. to especially small businesses who struggled a lot with this. So it became a very very useful platform to get knowledge and experience, which in turn helped you directly with your day to day business. It is said that most bars and restaurant cannot be survived over、uh, two years, but Happy Monk have survived for about twelve years. Why do you think that Happy Monk can be survived so long time and is still、uh, going strong? That's a really good question. Yeah, and, and you're right. The F and B business is is notoriously tough. But one thing from day one we decided is we have to be very true to this brand. I think is is. Sounds obvious, but not everyone does it. People、yeah. sometimes take shortcuts because they see short-term opportunities for gain. And secondly, focusing on the team, and I think this is maybe the most important single thing: the business and the brand. You have to build it from within, and that means you have to treat and develop your team in the same way as your customers. And actually, there's not that much difference. Yeah. And if your team are miserable and unhappy and they don't understand what you're trying to do. How can you build? How can you serve up happiness? Yeah. At the end of the day, we're not、uh, we're not in the business of we're not selling drinks and coffee. Yeah. We use drinks, coffee, food, and music and atmosphere and environment to make people feel good. So we're an experience business. Yeah. And understanding that is really important. Understanding the real customer experience, whether internal or external. So we focus tons on that, and we've built up a very strong. Uh, corporate culture, and this has really come from the bottom up. Something that's grown and developed naturally.、Yeah. But in in F and B, you have to constantly improve. The minute you stop, you go down. Yeah. And so one thing I can say we have done, and there's plenty of things we haven't done well, but we do have a culture of constantly trying to improve. You just have to focus on improvement and delivery of happiness to your customers. Yeah. And everything else should work out. We put our energy more into developing the team and improving the customer experience.、Yeah. I think I think it's really important.、Yeah. This whole topic of brands is is a huge one. I see a tremendous opportunity here in China for、uh, consumer brands, for lifestyle brands. It's part of this sort of domestic domestic consumption piece as well. And I think the Chinese consumers, as as a generalization, like anywhere, are becoming more savvy. They are no longer just about what are you going to give me at what price, but it's who are you and what values do you have. And consumers want to know how you do things, why you do things, not just what you serve. So,、uh, what is the current business environment in the Greater Bay Area? Is there any room for the further? Uh, improvement. So I think the GBA, the Greater Bay Area, is obviously something super exciting. Becomes one of the four major Bay Area clusters globally. 
along with sort of the US and Tokyo and you know just the sheer number GBA was its own country it would be a major economy in its own right so the opportunities are obviously huge and I think what's definitely changed is the connectivity so 20 years ago it was very much Dongguan and Guangzhou and Shenzhen and Zhuhai were sort of competing a lot with each other now it does feel physically and in terms of policy it's all joining up and it's becoming more certain industries high-tech is Shenzhen and autos is maybe Guangzhou and, and, and so on the way it's all kind of joining up and linking You've got Hong Kong and Macau, and each place will have its own certain role within the, the big pie. Just by sheer GDP and consumer power and speed of growth, there are enormous opportunities. But I, I hope Guangzhou, Shenzhen, GBA opens a bit more, becomes a bit more on the sort of hum, human spirit side, okay. not just about the success, work, business, money, GDP, industry. More software improvement. More software yeah. improvement. And if you look all around the world, the what consumers are expecting from brands is brands that are more socially responsible. Yeah. Looking back at your life, do you have any advice for the younger generation? So my advice to young people is don't just focus on study, study and what I can get, but focus on getting experience. You know, especially now with AI, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and everything else. Um, hard skills, you know, these are things you can actually kind of buy. <laughs> yeah. But soft skills, you know, how do I behave? Can I communicate with people? Will people trust me? Will people uh, feel comfortable? Will they, are they willing to listen? Can I lead people? These skills are super, super important. Um, I guess this is what I say to, to young people. Experience, get all the experience you can. Don't focus on money on day one. Focus on experience. Take advantage of opportunities. Take risks. You know, lots of people at the end of their lives say, "I really wish I'd taken more risks, not just stayed on." Try something different. Try to pursue a life and a course of things, doing things you actually like. Because if you like them, you'll have passion, and if yeah. you're, you have passion, you'll be good at it. Yeah. And if you're good at it, everything else should come naturally. Naturally.